For more on this now, we are joined by Christine Hong, fellow with the Korea Policy Institute. Christine, thank you for being with us. The first thing North Korea's neighbors did when they found out about Kim's death is raise their military alert status. Why was that? I think that when you're talking about North Korea's neighbors, you're talking specifically um, not about China, but you're talking about uh, Japan and South Korea. And if you are speaking about China, you're speaking about China's response to these two nations. And so you have to understand that the region is basically structured by a neo-Cold War alignment. Um, the U.S. and its two um, client states, South Korea and Japan, are linked together in a kind of mutual defense pact, a kind of um, you know premise that has them tied in terms of a kind of uh, common security agenda. And so if you look at the policy of the, the current South Korean president, who is a hardliner relative to North Korea, and whose policy has been very much one of an eclipse policy, there hasn't been any kind of uh, continuation of the detente that we saw under the two liberal uh, presidents of South Korea, um, Noh Mi Hyun, and before that, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, Kim Dae-jung. And, um, you know, the policy has been one that has been, for all intents and purposes, a kind of eclipse policy. And so we've seen uh, these states that have been historically linked to the U.S. Um, having very little vision with regard to North Korea. And that also goes for the Obama administration. And it's these states that had a sort of high security alert. And you could say that China's was very much a sort of response to that, that, um, that response on the part of Japan and South Korea. Well, as the new leader is about to step in, should other countries, especially those the United States and South Korea, reconsider their approach to Pyongyang? I think that it's a perfect opportunity to do so. Um, we have um, basically a um, an opportunity um, it's even a symbolic opportunity with the death of Kim Jong-il. Um, you know, basically, uh, the U.S. has had a sort of historic sort of anathema to North Korea. But with regard to Kim Jong-il, there's almost been a kind of personal animus on the part of recent U.S. leaders toward the North Korean leader. And at this moment, um, you also have to understand that as all the eyes of the world are trained on North Korea and North Korea as a kind of spectacle is endlessly being interpreted in international media. What's misunderstood is that in point of fact, um, it's not that the world is waiting to react to North Korea, but North Korea historically has been, um, as a very sort of small country that has been fighting for its own sovereignty and autonomy, it has been reacting to external forces around it. At this moment, um, North Korea has basically a year-old request to the U.S. and uh, to the EU and other international um, nations, bodies, etc., and they've asked for food aid. And this has been, um, uh, as I said, this was uh, something that North Korea reached out uh, to the international community about a year ago. The U.S. is in a position to act on this request at this moment. And so even though it may seem like the world is um, waiting on North Korea to make its first move, North Korea is actually in a position in which it's been waiting for the U.S. to respond to its request for food aid. But what about, are there chances, if any, of the two Koreas uh, drawing closer together, even possibly reuniting in the future? I think that there are very high hopes. You know, um, the, as I mentioned, the current uh, president of South Korea, Lee myung bak has had an extremely neoconservative policy toward North Korea. And even though there was a great deal of anger and outraged in South Korea about incidents that happened last year, like the shelling, North Korean shelling of Yeonpyeong Island. There's also very a lot of popular sentiment in South Korea that viewed the lack of vision, the lack of engagement, and the lack of positive leadership on the part of the South Korean president toward North Korea in an absolute reversal of his predecessor's sunshine policy approach as um, destabilizing relations with North Korea. And I think that you see even in sort of preliminary polling amongst South Koreans a kind of rejection of the hardline stance of the current um, 
president. And insofar as that is the case, it bodes well for the possibility of some of the kinds of connections that were made during the two previous uh, presidential administrations in South Korea. Now, you mentioned China earlier. Uh, what's their mm -hmm. policy really going to be towards North Korea now? Well, I mean, I think uh, we already have signs of that. China, China has indicated um, publicly that it is willing to meet with um, the new North Korean leader. And so, it, you know, um, there have been in the past decades um, a kind of increase in close ties between uh, North Korea and China in no small part because the bilateral relations of North Korea to countries like Japan and South Korea um, have deteriorated in recent years. Christine Hong, fellow with the Korea Policy Institute, thank you for joining us. Thank you.